Okay, so where do you deploy a geosynchronous satellite? Well, first of all, what do we mean by a geosynchronous satellite? Um, satellite is anything which is um, revolving uh, around something else. So the moon is a satellite of the Earth. The Earth is a satellite of the sun. Um, my direct TV satellite dish points at a direct TV satellite. And that satellite is up in the sky, very, very high. I can't see it, but it acts as an antenna to send a television signal to my satellite dish, which is mounted on my roof. And that gives me a television signal. Okay, so let's, uh, let me just kind of sketch what's going on. So here is planet Earth. And remember that satellite dish? Okay, here's my satellite dish right there. Okay, it's that kind of parabolic dish. Okay, uh, sort of like a mirror. And what happens is the radio waves bounce off the curved surface and is directed towards the antenna, which is in the middle of that satellite dish. It kind of protrudes. Um, so let's uh, do our satellite. Um, so our satellite, for, for this system to work, I have to have the satellite above my house or in the same spot in the sky at all times. That's what makes it geosynchronous. Geosynchronous means that it moves in sync with the Earth. So the Earth um, revolves, and it revolves once a day. So what happens is the satellite does the same thing. It revolves once a day. It just has a much larger circumference in, in, its, um, uh, in its orbit. I said revolves. I should have said orbit. So the Earth revolves around its axes, and the satellite... Uh, orbits around the Earth. Okay, um, it's geosynchronous because it's always above the same position, the same spot on the Earth. That's what makes it uh, geosynchronous. Geosynchronous uh, satellites um, are above the equator. Okay, so my uh, satellite dish is pointed towards the sat um, towards the satellite, but it's kind of pointed. Um, uh, towards the southern hemisphere from from my home. Um, okay, so uh, have to ask some some questions here. We want to figure out how we put up this satellite. Um, well, we know it has to uh, have the same period as the Earth. So let's start with that. We know that the period of the satellite t of the satellite has to be equal to t of the Earth, and the t of the Earth is equal to one day. And one day is equal to 24 hours. And 24 hours is equal to 24 times 60 minutes. And a minute is 60 seconds. So let's just cut to the chase. That's 86,400 seconds. Okay, so that I need to know. Okay, so that's the timing for my satellite. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to ask some questions in this problem solving. Um, what makes the satellite orbit? Okay, I'm asking what makes the satellite move in a circle? And I think you know the answer to that. You know that centripetal force makes the satellite move in a circle, so in, in its orbit. What provides the centripetal force? Think of that question. Those are the kind of questions I ask in class all the time. What provides a centripetal force? Well, in this case, it must be gravity. So there's two ways of figuring out gravity. Um, I can't use uh, uh, weight is equal to mg because I don't know the value of little g at that altitude. But I could use big G, f big G. So f big G provides 
the force of attraction, which is the centripetal force that makes the object turn in a circle. So it provides the FC. Okay. So everything I just explained, listen to it again so you understand the logic. Okay, so those are for you that just copy down notes and don't listen to me. It's just a reminder. Okay. Okay, so FC is provided by FG, so FG equals FC. And FG is going to be big G, mass of the satellite, orbiting above the Earth at a particular distance above the Earth. Okay. And that's equal to M of, well, what's orbiting? Satellite. So this would be MS. It wouldn't be ME. It would be MS because MS is what's going in a circle. And V squared over R. Oh, look at that. We got a couple of R's there. So we should be able to cancel stuff. But we're not done. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's uh, talk about the R before we continue. So let's go back to our little diagram here. We have R of the Earth right there. And then we have this distance right here, which is going to be the height above the Earth. So I'm going to call that H. And that's what we want to figure out. We want to figure out what is H. OK, so let's make a little note here on the side that uh, let's do this R total. R total is going to be equal to R E plus H. Okay, or H is going to be equal to R total minus R E. So I'm going to need that later. I'm far from that right now. Okay, so, uh, so what else can we do here? Hmm. Let's uh, let's make a note that V is equal to uh, circumference divided by period. Uh, okay, so there's the period that, that I talked about earlier. And I know circumference is 2 pi r. Look at that, another r divided by that. Okay, so um, I think what I'm going to have to do is make sure that uh, the R is clear. So let's call this RT. I'm going to put a T right there, put a T right there, and put a T over here. Okay, and let's do the, some substitution. Oh, do I need to know the mass of the satellite? No, let's get rid of that. Okay, and I can get rid of the square right there and get rid of that. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it just to keep things clean. So g, mass of the Earth, divided by the total radius is equal to v squared. Oh wow, that's much simpler now. Uh, now I have to replace the v. So g, m, e, over r, t is equal to 2 pi r, t, divided by t, and all of that gets squared. So that becomes annoying, but doable. So that's 4 pi squared r t squared over t squared. Wow. Okay. So what do I want to figure out? I want to figure out h. And h is in the formula. But keep in mind that later we're going to use this. So to figure out h, I need to figure out rt. I know what r of the earth is. I can look that up. So let's uh, take this equation and rearrange it. Let's get those r's together. 
So if I rearrange this, I'm going to have to move the R uh, up and everything else to the other side. So the final result is RT cubed, look at that, is equal to big G ME T squared divided by 4 pi squared. And that's the equation we're going to use to figure out where to put this geosynchronous satellite. So I'm just going to put a division line here because I'm running out of room and I want to make sure everything's clean. Okay, so let's move up there and continue. So RT cubed is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And I'm using MKS units, so I'm not actually writing the units down. And uh, the mass, I look that up, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilogram. And 86,400, and then I have to square that. divided by 4 pi squared, okay? And I'm going to make a little note here in case you ask. Look that up, of course, okay? And uh, when we're done, what will happen is R, I'm going to have to take the cube root um, R is going to be equal to 7.54 times 10 to the 22 uh, meters cubed. Okay, so uh, actually that's sorry, R cubed, R, R, R to the third power is equal to that. So if I take the cube root of that, that's going to be equal to 4.23 times 10 to the 7 meters. Okay, so that's going to be RT. RT. Okay, we're not done. Because I know that H is equal to RT minus RE. So that'll be 4.23 times 10 to the 7 meters minus the radius of the Earth, and I need to look that up again, and that's 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. So H is going to be equal to um, 3.6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 meters. Okay. So, just to give you an idea how far that is, that's roughly six Earth radii above our planet. So, satellites are actually very, very high, which explains why we can't see them, 